So now we need to talk about confidence levels. So the definition of a confidence level is the percent of times the true population parameter is within the confidence interval. So for example, to be 95% confident means that if you create a 100 confidence interval, the population parameter will be in approximately 95 of those intervals. Super, super important. It is not a 95% chance of one interval containing the population parameter. The true parameter, whatever it is, you know, the mean age of my friends or whatever, it already exists. So probability is used to predict something that hasn't happened. This has already happened. Whatever interval we make, it will or will not contain the true number, even though we don't know what it is yet. Essentially, we want 95% of the area of the normal curve, and we want that area centered on the curve. We talk about that using the concept of critical values. This is the z-scores, specifically z-scores, separating the middle 95% we want from the 5% we don't want. So visually, here's my curve. I've got 95% of the area centered in the middle. So 95% of my confidence intervals are going to contain that mean. And that means 5% will have means outside of the range. So now we're going to talk about finding critical values. And critical values are written as z alpha over 2. So z is in a z-score, and the subscript on the right-hand tail, or the right side, is alpha over 2. And we'll talk more about alpha in a minute. Now with z-scores, remember we always use the standard normal table. And when it comes to a table, then we want to know that a z-score represents standard deviations from the mean, and don't forget z-scores are on the edge of the table. Also, what we're going to be interested in is finding alpha. That's the Greek lowercase letter for A, and don't forget it's going to represent area. Most specifically, it's in the right tail of the curve, and area is always listed inside or in the middle of the table. And before we get to the critical value, we also need to talk about confidence intervals. Remember that they are always listed as a percent or percents. So an example would be discussing a 95% confidence interval. Okay, so going back to alpha, which is the area that's outside of the interval, not outside edges of the table, but outside of our 95% confidence interval. So the way that we find alpha is we subtract whatever our confidence level is from 100%. So in this particular example, we're gonna have 100% minus 95% to get 5%. This 5% is the complement of the area under the curve and whenever we list alpha, we always list it as a decimal. So I need to change our 5% to 0 0.05. So continuing with this, since our confidence interval is centered around the point estimate, then specifically that alpha that we found, the area that's not in this centered portion, it is split in half between the two tails of the normal curve. We have our middle confidence area and alpha it has to fit on both sides, so therefore it's split in half. Specifically, that's why it's written as z alpha over two. And remember, that symbol or that format represents area in the right tail. Um, so technically, if we were using our normal bell-shaped curve, area in the left tail would have a negative z-score, so negative z alpha over 2. We don't need to worry about that it's a negative z-score and a positive z-score because when we use the confidence interval formulas, it's going to take care of that. So for example, in this problem, 
we said alpha equaled 0.05, and so alpha over 2 is to divide 0.05 by 2, and we'll get 0 0.025. So going back, if you remember, we just said we have a 95% confidence interval for this particular problem, and because it's centered, our alpha that's in the right tail, which is how we write z alpha over 2, um, technically would be on the left side, I'm sorry, is on the right side of the curve. But since it's equal on both sides, then the area in the left tail is also equal to the area in the right tail. Remembering that our table lists area in the left, we could just go ahead and look up 0 0.025. We could just look up alpha, even though it's supposed to be area in the right tail. If we look up that number, so we'll go to our table and we'll go to row negative 1.9 and we actually find 0 0.25 in the table. So we can read straight up and we'll find our z score, which is technically negative 1.96, but z alpha over 2 is area in the right tail. So since we want the positive version of that number, then we can turn around and answer that we have a 95 percent, whoops, my percent doesn't look right, confidence interval that has a critical value of positive 1.96.